Hey my glam girls, welcome back to my channel, it's Chelsea, and today I have an exciting video because we are trying an entirely new brand to the beauty industry, and I am so excited because I thoroughly enjoy the artistry of Mario. So I was very excited to get my hands on these products today. I went to my Sephora today and I picked up more products than I thought I was, but we're gonna hopefully get to play with everything today. But before we get into this video, I just wanna say thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend some time with me. If this is your first time here, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe to my channel and join the Glam Girl Squad. And if you are a returning subscriber, well, thank you so much for deciding to come back and support my channel with all of your likes and your comments. I truly do appreciate each and every one of them. So let's get into this video. So, outfit of the day check-in. So this little dress is from Amazon and I really like the ruching of the dress on the side. So it fits the hips pretty nicely. And then of course it's gonna ruch in the middle. So if you want to kind of take away some distraction from the mid area i think it does a good job of doing that um this is definitely a stretchy dress so i've got room for my bump but if you're not pregnant this definitely would still have or still allow for room based on the curves and things of your body it is a little shorter than i would normally wear um but i have also washed this dress about two times now so it has shrunk slightly just slightly in length um, but it hasn't shrunk to the point where I can't wear it or it's like drastically shorter than what it originally was. And then for shoes, I wanted to show you all the boots that I have on. So these are boots from Vince Camuto and I love, love, love them. Vince Camuto is doing a 25% off sale right now on their website. Um, so definitely this is a great time to get boots and things like that. But I love me a good booty for the fall time. And then my necklace that I have here, I did get it off of Amazon, but it's a beautiful tiered necklace and very inexpensive. I think this necklace was around 12 to $13. Um, so I will make sure to link the dress, the necklace, and the shoes down below. Definitely check it out if you're interested. But let's get into this new makeup. I am gonna provide swatches of all the products that I'm, I'm gonna show today. I will provide them at the end of the video. So stay tuned to the end of the video if you'd like to see those swatches. But you all know me, I like to try to give you all as much info as I can about products. So I was watching, I think her name is Miriam Makiage. I'm really sorry if I butchered her name, um, but I will link her video down below so that you can reference her video and some of the, the info that I learned from there. I wanted to get a little bit of a backstory about the products and the brand. And so I'll be sharing some information from her video that I learned about each of the products. Um, but like I said, I have linked her video down below so that you can check that out yourself. So I picked up all three of the eyeshadow palettes. So we have here the Master Metals palette. And initially I wasn't gonna get this eyeshadow palette, but then when I saw it in store and I saw it in action, I had to get it. That does retail for $48. The next palette that I picked up is going to be the Master Metallics palette. And I was interested in this one in particular. I thought the shades were really, really pretty. And neat little fun fact, I learned this from Miriam's video. Mario chose these colors based on the colors that we find in our bodies and the color of our tissues and organs and things like that. So he said that if you were to place different tissues and organs that we have in our bodies under a microscope, these are the colors that you would see based on whatever that tissue and organ was. And you guys know I teach anatomy and physiology and I was like, come on with the biology. I was here for it. Um, also from the Sephora rep, he said that these colors were also inspired by um, different people's eye colors or so certain colors are supposed to pop with your eye color. Okay, and then the last one is gonna be the Masters Matte Palette. And this particular palette, I also learned this from Miriam's video, is going to be inspired by different tones and undertones that we have across skin complexions. And so this is a, you know, what we would consider a standard matte palette, but it's formulated based off the undertones and shades that you see across different and various complexions. In addition to the eyeshadow palette, I picked up the Prep and Set Concealer Palette. So this particular palette is going to um, allow you to prime your lids, excuse me, cancel out any redness and things like that. But you can also use these two cream shades as actual face concealer shades. 
And this is a powder here that you can use to set either your eyelids or your face, whichever one you use this for. Um, this is the particular palette in deep. There are two other ones. There's one in light and one in medium. I picked up a highlighter. I just opened it up and it is broken. So I'm, oh, I'm gonna try to hold, here we go. Here we go. So here is the highlighter that I picked up. This one is called Bronzite, I believe. Yes, Bronzite. Um, it is broken. I just realized that when I opened it up. And I did get his mixing medium, which I realized based on the ingredients, this mixing medium has the same ingredients as Mayron. So I'm going to do a comparison of the two to see if you really need to get his mixing medium or if you have Mayron at home if you could use that because this particular bottle has 4.5 fluid ounces and I think I paid like maybe $10 on Amazon for this and the medium by the mixing medium by Mario was $14 for 0.5 fluid ounces so huge price difference here huge amount of product difference here so we'll be comparing those two but if you do get his mixing medium you also get this spatula as well to mix the shadows with and then lastly two brushes so I usually don't ever buy brushes from brands it's just not my thing but I don't know I was looking at them and I was like they actually look nice so I picked up a blender brush and a packing brush um, the brush E3, which looks like so. It's a blender brush, but it's also a packing brush. And then I picked up the E4 brush. And this one is your traditional shader packing brush. Okay, now that we have all of that out of the way, let's go to get things on our eyes. All I have on my face is foundation. I'm using the NARS Soft Matte Foundation in the shade Cadiz. And that's it. So let's come in a little closer, get some stuff on our eyes. First, we're gonna start off with the concealer. So I'm gonna go in with my finger and I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. This is a lighter of the shade. So this is supposed to cancel out redness and also um, kind of lighten my eyelid so that shadows can pop on it. And this definitely does cancel out some redness. Um, I can definitely see a difference in smoothing out this canvas here compared to this eye that doesn't have any concealer on it. I'm gonna now go in with my BK Beauty 201 brush and I'm gonna take this powder right here and we're gonna set the eyes. The concealer was nice and creamy. Um, and I liked using it with my hands. Okay, so let's do two eye looks. So we're gonna start off with the Master Matte palette, and I'm gonna go in with his brush. This is the E3 brush. Let's start off with this shade right here, and the names of the shades are Matte 1, Matte 2, Matte 3, really basic, um, <laughs> no fuss types of names. And we're gonna just start blending this color as our transition color. Okay, that blended out really nicely and pretty quickly. Let's go in with this shade right here in the crease. Um, let's blend that to add a little bit of depth. This brush is nice. Um, I would probably use this more as a shader brush because although I am able to blend the shadows out, I think it would work best applying shadows and packing them on. Let's go in with this shade right here. Pack this shade right here. And so far with the three matte shades that I've used, they are nice and pigmented. Blending it very nicely. I'm not having any issues with them, which is great in terms of them skipping or you know, just not being um, movable. And then I want to go in with this shade right here and use that on the outer merge portion of the eye to add some depth to this eye look. So with the Master Metals palette, what's pretty cool about this one is it comes with a tray right here that you can remove. 
So here is the tray that was just right here. You can remove the tray so that you can mix your metals with his mixing medium. He calls it the master manipulator. So I'm gonna take the master manipulator. We're gonna add one drop right here into the palette. And then I'm going to use my spatula. I feel like a scientist here. <laughs> I'm gonna go in with this shade right here and mixing it in with the solution. And what's really interesting about this is that initially it is very much a liquid. So I'm gonna show that to you all right here. So you can see that the product is very liquidy, but once it sets, it actually sets and dries to where it dries to almost like a creamy type of formula. So I'm gonna take the same brush that we were using before and I'm gonna go in guys and apply this onto the eye. And I think I wanna add just some, so I've dipped it onto my brush. Um, I've taken up all of the product here. I think I'm gonna dip just a little bit into the actual color in the palette tap some back into my tray to make sure we've got like an even distribution of the product. And then let's apply to the eye. And that, my friends, is stunning. This is a very, very, very pretty. Do y'all see that? That is gorgeous and not difficult to use. I wanna mix I want to use this one so same thing and just to show you a difference between the two let's take the same color that i just used on my eye and we're going to do a swatch of it without the mixing medium so you can just get an idea of it so as you can see you don't need the mixing medium necessarily it's very creamy to the touch but to get that high intensity shine um you definitely want to add some type of mixing medium to it um to make it look more like this and this is definitely one of those palettes that you will want to use in the upcoming um holiday seasons and things like that i don't know how much holiday partying we're going to be doing this year um but if we are fortunate enough to do any of that this is definitely one that i would want to be wearing during that time this is really 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 pretty. I'm going to go in with my Sonia G Blender Pro brush. Let's go in with this shade right here and we're going to blend that all over the eye. As the transition color, this shade is basically the shade of my skin. Let's go with this shade and I'm using a Wayne Goss 18 brush. This formula is just beautiful and smooth. I'm just going to blend this out and circular motions toward the outer area of the eye. I'm gonna take this shade right here and I'm going to apply it to the eye without the mixing medium so we can see what it looks like. I'm going in with the Mario E4 brush and let's see how this looks on its own. That's nice. really pretty color but I feel like the intensity is definitely not there and makes sense metallic shades tend to work better with either your finger or some type of um, medium so let's see what it looks like with the finger I feel like we're gonna already see yeah definitely get more intensity with the finger this is already reminding me of like a holiday party look. <laughs> I'm going to use another color from the Master Metallics, the, the palette we're working from with all of the shimmers. And I'm gonna use my Mayron to see if that's going to be any type of difference from the Master Manipulator. All of these M's, I've got to say them slowly or I will get myself tongue tied. Okay, so I've got a bottle here. So I'm going to try to do the equivalent of one drop. And I must get the shade on the eye, like no questions asked. So doing the same thing like I did with the metallics, taking a little bit of that eyeshadow on the spatula, mixing it into the mixing solution, going in with that same brush, the E4 brush, 
and just mixing it around. Okay, so this is looking a little different. It is not looking the same um, as the metals eyeshadow did. But of course, my variables are different. I've got a different formula of eyeshadow and I'm using a different medium. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the same shade on my finger and see if that makes a difference. Using that. Oh yeah, finger application. Can you guys see that? Definitely giving me an, a more intense type of application. So, it could be two things. It could have been the Mixing Mayron, or it could be that this particular formula doesn't really need that mixing medium, that you can use your brush, or you can use your finger to apply them. So, for this particular eyeshadow, I believe it works better using either your finger or using a dense brush. I don't think you need that mixing medium to um, intensify it. I'm gonna go back into the concealer palette and I'm gonna go in with this lighter shade and see how that looks under the eye as an under eye concealer. And we can do a comparison to the other under eye to see what it looks like. Going in with my finger, I wanna see if that makes a difference on the application of the concealer. Definitely see coverage of the concealer under my eye. In terms of it being a brightener under my eye, I don't think it brightens my under eye too much um, because I feel like this more so matches my skin. But if I wanted to use this as more of a coverage concealer um, and then maybe use another concealer on top to brighten, I could definitely do that. For kicks and giggles, let's use the powder in the palette to set the under eye. Um, because once again, talking to the representative at Sephora, he said that Mario really wanted to create products that people could use and get full benefit from. So if you didn't have concealers at home and things like that, you're able to use all of his products to do a complete eye look. It's actually not bad at all. I mean, set the area, doesn't look too dry either. Um, I also didn't use a lot. I'm using the Wayne Goss airbrush brush. So this particular brush doesn't pack on the powder. Um, but this, I will say this powder is usable for the under eye. Like if I were in a pinch and I just needed something really, really quick, I think this actually looks pretty good under the eye. Let's go in with some more matte shades. So I want to go in with this particular shade right here, and we're gonna use that on this outer area of the eye. For this eye, for the other eye, we're gonna go back in with this shade right here, doing the same thing, just keeping it on the outer edge of the eye. This particular shade right here, I wanna use that, like I said, for the inner corner and also the lower lash line. So I'm going to take the Mixing Mayron. Like I said, I wanted to see if it really is the Mixing Mayron or is it the metallic shades just don't need any type of mixing medium. Then I'm gonna take my No Name brush and I'm mixing that all in, taking a little bit of the, dipping the brush directly into the shadow itself corner lower lash line. Okay. That is gorgeous. Taking it along the inner corner. Oh my goodness. Be Do y'all see that? Do you see that? Actually, let me go so you can see it. Gorgeous. Like I need this all over the lid gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay, so I'm gonna say that you don't need the master manipulator if you have some mixing Mayron at home. Um, like I said, because the ingredients are the same and now I'm using this with the master metals shadow, it is looking 
like how this particular eyeshadow looked. So I think if you don't have Mayron at home and you just want to get this for the convenience of it, and then also with the spatula, because this does come with the master medium, master manipulator, <laughs> um, then I say definitely get it. Um, you are able to literally dispense one drop out of this particular tube, which is good. So even though you're not getting a lot, you really only need one drop to mix the product with the medium. So I feel like you could get some good use out of this, even though it's not a lot of product and it is more expensive than buying this larger Mayron. I would say the downfall to this one is that there is no dispenser for me to measure out what exactly I need. So I've kind of got to spend more time like putting back, putting a little bit in, putting back to get the amount that I want. Um, so in terms of ease of use, the Mario product is easier to use. But if you've got your Mixing Mayron at home, you know how to use it in terms of, you know, it doesn't bother you that there's no um, applicator to dispense the product with it. I say to get this and, you know, get a better bang for your buck. Let's go in with this shade right here and I'm going to apply it right here. I'm gonna go back in with the Mario manipulator. This shade right here that he's calling copper. I am not a like consistent using of, user of mixing Mayron or like a mixing medium. So this is actually new to me as well. But that seems to be the better way to use this product. Let's go with this shade right here. And then the Metallics palette, just as an FYI, he calls the shades Metallics 1, 2, 3, and so forth. So this doesn't have an actual name. Ooh, okay. So this color is very similar to the copper shade in the Master Metals palette that I just applied. I'm going to go in with this shade right here and use that for the inner corner as well to see if we can kind of brighten it up. Okay, yeah, that does a better job. And once again, to me, the metallics are applying just fine without any type of medium. So I'm gonna finish off my makeup, finish off the eyes, and then I will come back because we do have a highlighter to apply. And then I will give you my final thoughts on the product. So stay tuned. Okay guys, so we are done. I have put on lashes. I'm wearing my Roquel Beauty Lashes in the style Moonlight. And I filled in my brows, used eyeliner and things like that. What I did do off camera that I wanted to tell you all, I actually went in with the black shade right here which based on the formulation of this particular black shade it's supposed to be like five times more intense of a black shade than your normal black eyeshadows and i actually use that to deepen up this outer area on this eye look and i like it so much better um if you remember i had used this shade as the outer crease depth shade but i really liked adding this black shade to it um, and I also took it along the lower lash line. So if you're noticing something different with the eyes, that's what I did different with this particular eye. Okay, so now let's go in with the highlight. And like I said, <laughs> it's a little broke. So I want to show what the highlight looks like just applying it dry. And then we're going to apply it mixing it with the master manipulator because i've seen both and there's a definite difference in the two it's very soft to the touch kind of feels like the shades in the metallics um palette so and no wonder it broke this is a very i'm like breaking it even more just trying to get some on my hand but this is what the shadow looks like or the highlighter looks like on my hand and then swatched on my arm. It reminds me, you can barely see it, but it reminds me of how the Fenty Diamond Balm is. When you put your finger in it and swatch it, you just get more of like that um, crystal-like, diamond-like effect on the skin. So I'm gonna go in with my Wayne Goss small brush and I put some on here and let's see what it looks like on the cheeks. This product can be used on the face or it can be used on the eyes as well. But I wanted to use it on the face since we have enough going on on the eyes. So this is what the product looks like on the cheek. You can definitely see the highlighter effect 
looks really, really pretty from afar. I'm gonna come in so you can see it closer on my cheeks. If you can see, you can definitely see the sparkliness of it. Um, it's definitely not completely smooth in texture in the sense of it's just not a pure fine needle shimmer. But I will say, even though there are sparkles, this is very soft to the touch. Like I'm rubbing my finger where I had initially applied it to my hand and I don't feel hardly anything, actually I don't feel anything on my hand. So these, these uh, shimmer particles are definitely very finely milled and soft. They're not like chunks of glitter, if that makes sense. So now I'm gonna take Master Manipulator, going back in with the Wayne Goss Small Brush, mixed it into the mixing medium. And then like I did with the metallics, I dipped it back into the actual powder itself gonna dust off the excess and then we'll apply it here. And we're definitely getting more intensity of the product on this side. I also do feel like I need to switch brushes. This is a Refer P09 brush and it's a little more dense than the Wayne Goss brush is. And I feel like this is blending the product better to me this would be a product that i think would look beautiful on the eyes or the body as well and i would use it on the face if it were a special occasion but this is not a product that i personally would like to use as a highlight simply because you can see the texture now let's see if some setting spray helps to blend it in a bit more so I'm gonna use my Lila Be A Glow Face Mist, and then I'm gonna take my foundation brush and just blend it, press it into the skin. And this does help. So setting spray does help. So as you can see, you still see the highlighter, but I feel like now it's more pressed into the skin. It's not sitting on top of the skin like it was before. And I do like that better. I do like that better a lot. I do feel though that the setting spray took some of the intensity of the product away. So now I'm gonna go back in with the product, just a little bit of it and apply it on top, yeah. So the setting spray definitely took away some of the intensity of the product, but depending on how you like your highlighters, um, I feel like you can determine, you know, what would be better for you to use it. So final thoughts, first impressions on all of these products. Overall, I am here for this whole collection in terms of what I've used. And I mean, Mario did a great job. Okay, so let me go over each thing. First of all, I never really talked about the packaging. The packaging for the eyeshadow palettes are basically identical to each other. Um, there's no way to distinguish each palette from each other just looking at them from the front they're all going to be white with by mario at the bottom on the back though you do see the actual names of the palette and things like that so if you're trying to figure out what palette you want to go for you are going to have to flip them on their posterior side to determine which palette is which or open all three of them um which it would have been nice if like there could have been something on the front so you would know like, oh, okay, this is the metals and this is the mattes, this is the uh, metallics. But um, in terms of the actual packaging itself, I really do like the simplistic packaging. It's very sleek and lightweight. There's a really nice size mirror. So I don't wanna blind you all, but very nice size mirror. I was able to use it comfortably as I was applying my eyeshadow. So these palettes are really nice and compact to travel with, throw in your purse um, and use on the go. The clasp is easy to open and it's magnetic as well, so that's nice. Um, the packaging of the highlighter is going to be the same on the outside, so by Mario. And this one was a little um, tougher to open, but it also has more of a secured closure than the actual palettes do. Um, and I'm assuming it's because they know that this powder is pretty fine and uh, delicate. Obviously, mine came broken. And then the packaging of the concealer is gonna be the same as the palettes. It's gonna be this magnetic closure. 
very simplistic on the outside. So I, I really do like it. The master manipulator, I really like. I think, like I said, if you do not have Mixing Mayron at home and you really want to get the full effect of these eyeshadows, go, he go ahead and pick this up. Um, I don't think it'll be a waste of your money because you definitely can see the difference in the shadows with and without the mixing medium. So I feel like the mixing medium definitely is going to be something that you, that can add value to using these palettes, but is it an actual absolute necessary product? No. If you're the type that's like, hey, I'm okay with them just being how they are, then you definitely don't need to have it with the master metals palette but in terms of the master metal palette itself i love this like like i said this was the one that i was going to skip out on and i'm so glad that i got it the formulation of these shadows it's just beautiful i mean they're so beautiful and granted i have not had these shadows on for a very long time but i can tell that they're not going to be shadows that are going to easily you know um fade throughout the day even when I was kind of cleaning this up to add more shadows to it the ones that had already dried I had to kind of go over it with my um, makeup wipes to remove the product so it's definitely not going to be something that's going to just easily fade off kind of spill out all over your face or things like that like this is gorgeous this is the master metallics and this is the one that I was originally going to pick up so glad I did I think these shades are beautiful like this eye look right here does it not remind you of a holiday party? Like I'm ready for New Year's. I'm just ready for it all. Like I'm just ready. I think they're beautiful. I cannot wait to use this palette again to use some more of these metallic shades. Use your finger or use a dense packing brush and you'll really get to see the intensity of these shadows. The formulation is beautiful. When you put your finger in it, it's very creamy to the touch and they just glide onto the eye. Like you can take your finger and just swipe it on and you're getting full pigment and it's just beautiful um in the formulation so i really really like these i really like all of the palettes i recommend all of the palettes mario did a great job with the master mattes these mattes blended very easily very um user friendly as well especially if you're not you know a makeup enthusiast or a makeup artist sometimes the mattes can be a little tricky to use especially if they're dry in formula but these have a good formulation to them to where they're not too dry they're not overly creamy as well and they blend quite effortlessly this palette i definitely am glad that i have it but i would say this would be a palette that if you've got some really good solid matte shades at home and especially if like the undertones work well for you then i think this is a palette that you could skip if you have something like this at home that you enjoy but most of us have you know matte shades like this at home so this would be the one that i would say is not a necessity based on what your collection looks like at home but do i recommend it i absolutely do recommend it now this prime and set concealer palette i definitely feel like you could get some good use out of it depending on what you have at home and depending on how you like to prep your eyes so i think this did a really good job of canceling out the redness on my eyelids canceling out you know my veins and things like that and give me a really nice and, and really giving me a nice solid base to work with the uh concealer blended very well it was very uh creamy and it worked well i think on my lids and my under eyes like i said and i didn't add any other concealer just to show you all what it would look like so i think for this concealer I'm definitely getting coverage under the eyes, which is great, but I would need to go in with another concealer to brighten up the under eye and, you know, give my face a little bit more dimension. I didn't use this concealer shade at all, but next time I use this, I am going to use it to see how it would look as a cream contour on me or maybe like a cream bronzer. I don't know. It might be deep enough to give me like a slight cream bronze or cream contour look. So I will try that again. I didn't think to use that today, so I'm sorry. That's why I didn't use it today. And this powder, I think, is very, very useful. So you, we uh, saw me use it today to set my lids, and we also saw me use it to set my under eye. And I did top over my under eye with the um, Pat McGrath Under Eye Powder. I just love using that. But I do think this powder worked pretty decently under the eye to set it. If you've got a concealer at home that you really enjoy, especially for your eyes and your under eye, um, you have a powder that you enjoy, I don't think this is a necessity. I think this is for somebody who may not, who may not have this at home and they're just like, 
you know, how can I get like concealers and powders pretty affordably um, and all in one? This is $28. And I think for $28, getting two concealers and a powder, I think this is really a good deal if this is not something that you have at home. Both of these brushes are gonna retail for $22 each. And I really like how small and detailed these brushes are. I have smaller eyelids, so I don't have as much space on my eyelids. So I tend to like these smaller brushes because they fit really nicely into my eye and allow for me to do a little bit more detailed work than your larger fluffy brushes. Lastly, the highlighter, I would say out of all the products, this highlighter is my least favorite, but it's not my least favorite because of the product itself. It's just where I applied it. So next time I use this, I would use it on the eye. I probably wouldn't use it on the face. I think it's pretty on the face. And like I said, you know, maybe for like holiday time when I really want to kind of have that glittery effect, I would use it, but it's not gonna be a highlighter that I'm gonna reach for on a day-to-day -day basis because I don't like my highlighters to be as textured or as crystal-like as this is. But I think it is a beautiful product and I would definitely like it more on my eyes to give like that pop of, you know, glitter, shimmer. But all in all, I am very happy with this collection. I think it is beautiful. And I think depending on how you like to do your makeup, there's something in this collection for everyone. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of these products? What are you interested in? What are your thoughts on how they performed? Just let me know everything down in the comment section below. And I look forward to reading you guys' comments. Guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. And I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye, guys.